Okay, so welcome to a new video. Today we are going to take a look at the parts we are going to use for the Toyota or rather 4AG 20 valve turbo build. And I have laid out everything right here. So from the turbo to the intercooler, exhaust manifold, and some other miscellaneous stuff we are going to need. And I'm going to go through the parts uh, one by one uh, because probably some of you do want to know what we are going to be using. Yes, the build will start in, I guess, maybe a month or so. So it's gonna be a little while until it really starts. But I just want to show you what we are going to use because I want to do some uh, still some tuning videos on the NA car um, because there's still some stuff I want to show before I get to the turbo stuff. So first of all we have the turbo manifold which is a unit from AliExpress but although these cast units are pretty cheap although they uh, those AliExpress units tend to be pretty cheap this one was I think with shipping around 150 euros or something like that they are very strong because they are cast and the welded ones you can get for cheap, they will crack and it's just a matter of time. Even if yours maybe has not yet, it probably is going to be. And um, we are going to wrap this with some of this stuff. So this is some heat protection material with a layer of uh, stainless steel. So this is going to be welded around the manifold and also exhaust housing of the turbo to keep the heat inside where it belongs while yes this will increase exhaust gas temperatures or in general the temperature of the components um, it is very important in this case because it's very close to the radiator and also very close to some other peripherals that really don't like the heat that much so this uh, manifold it's not really a uh, log style manifold it's more like a kind of a combination of a cast and tubular manifold so it should flow pretty well at least better than a log style that was maybe built DIY and uh, it is a top mount so we are going to have some space issues but I already test fitted it and it should work we'll have to modify the radiator or the coolant line somewhat but that's not that big of an issue next up the turbo that's going to be you could obviously use a max speeding rods gt28 for like 150 bucks that's not a huge issue as long as you um, keep it to pretty low boost levels i'd say around 0.8 bar or 12 psi and we are going to use this um, pulsar gtx 2860r though um, in theory that turbo is going to be capable of around 400 to 450 horsepower although we are only aiming um, towards 280 or something around there so it should be around 0 0.6 to 0.8 bar we have an adjustable wastegate actuator so we are going to use a 0.3 bar spring first to just see what how the car behaves and then go from there with electronic boost control. As for oil lines, we are going to, going to use just normal NBR um, dash four feed lines with a restrictor and a dash 10 return. And uh, yeah, so that's going to be pretty easy. The stock oil pan for the 4AGE does not have an oil drain, although the 4AFE sump does have a drain so we are going to also use that instead of the stock one it should fit up as the block is the same so we are just going to swap oil pans and then we can also check for rod bearings and maybe change out the oil pump because who knows how long that's been in there going from the turbo to the exhaust we are going to use a 2.5 inch exhaust that's why i have a lot of two and a half inch bends here i also have a two and a half inch pipe here we are going to use a adapter to three inch and then taper down to uh, two and a half inch because that's going to be more than enough for our pole goals with two and a half inch we can be or we should be able to look at about 400 horsepower without any massive issues we may put in this um, muffler or other resonator as it is flow through because the car still is pretty loud and uh, 
I don't know how much that turbo will dampen the noise, so we'll see about that. As for intake system goes, we have this intercooler, which I previously ran in my MX-5. It's rated in theory for up to 500 horsepower, although I wouldn't push it that far. I'd say up to 400 horsepower may be okay, but anything above is kind of getting pretty warm, I think. Also in our climate here in Greece, we tend to over or tend to over spec the intercoolers because well it's get it gets very hot here so as i said for our application this is fine if you want to go or if we would go any higher we might need to upgrade that but it fits pretty well in the front of the toyota i've already made sure of that so we just need to buy to build some uh, hangers for it and there's not going to be a massive issue with that. As for piping we are going to use 2 inch um, for the hot side because it's not really needed anything bigger and then for the cold side we're going to use 2.5 inch. I have some silicone couplers from FMIC and we are going to weld up a, a stainless steel intercooler piping kit. Otherwise intake is just going to be a 3 inch filter or rather a normal 3 inch intake and pretty much nothing else. We also have a replacement fan for the radiator, though I don't know if that's going to be strong enough. On my MX-5 it was, but here I'm not sure, maybe I'm gonna order a second one. Or we'll see about how, if I even can use that radiator or need to maybe change it to a Civic radiator, which is half size and therefore um, might need a bigger fan. Something you cannot see here would be the fuel system as the parts have not arrived or rather the injectors have not arrived. We are going to use 800 uh, cc injectors. They are some upgraded side feed injectors because the 4AG 20 valve is using side feed, a side feed rail, which is a bit of an issue because there aren't much injectors to choose from. But for now, it's the best value option, I guess. Fuel pump is going to be a 340 liter per hour that I'm just going to put in the tank. It's an AM unit. They're pretty common, so that's nothing special, but it should be able to handle the power easily. Because the stock fuel pumps are, I think, like around 100 liters per hour, which is not going to be enough. Clutch, we are for now going to use the stock one. I don't know how well that will last, although there may be an upgraded one in there as it is pretty heavy and the, I don't know, I'm not sure, but we'll see how, how, that, how well that works. ECU-wise, as I've shown in the videos before or in some videos before and also in the last one about this project, we are going to use a Speedwino EC which is already in the car and already running. Um, we also have obviously a wideband gauge which is needed for tuning it. Uh, so yeah, the electronic side is already managed with that. In my guide of tuning this Speedwino, I will also go about uh, how to tune an ECU for boost. So we will be looking at these changes, what needs to be changed for boost or with boost and how to tune a car that is boosted. So I guess also stay tuned for that. Anyway, that's it for the parts overview, basically. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, any suggestions, maybe you have some experience with the four AGs on forced induction, uh, let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I wish you a nice day and goodbye.